Hi everyone, John here with a video on your histogram. I thought I'd make this video because I've heard so many people talking about histograms and a lot of people swear by histograms. Now, I want to tell you that I use the histogram and I'm sure all great photographers use the histogram, but the histogram is you need to take it with a pinch of salt. Photographers will tell you, no, use your histogram. Now, you, you need to understand your histogram. So you've got like over the right hand side, you've got your highlights in the midtones, you've got your midtones and at the left hand side, you've got the shadows. It's as easy as that. And this sort of shows in this image, if you look, we've got a lot more detail down towards the lower left of the histogram which would represent all this dark area round the white then the white bit here is this little flat bit going across to the right hand side um, and you can clearly see that on the histogram now I took this shot and you know a lot of my subscribers will know how critical I am about exposure now when I first started I always wanted to nail my exposures but then after and I used to always look at the histogram. So in all fairness, this is a default image. I think it's got some sharpening on it, but it, it's default on the exposure and stuff like. Years ago, or not years ago, but a while ago, I would have gone to something like this out of the camera, and you can still see there's nothing blown out. And and I used to always get my exposures like this, and then I knew that I had the best exposure possible. Now. You can still work that way. I mean, I do work this way sometimes, but then there's other times where like this shot, I just didn't, because, because it's at a really low ISO as well, it's only for ISO 400. If I were at 1600, I might have exposed it slightly hotter than I did like now, the default exposure is this. That's because when I looked on the back of my screen, it was nice and cloudy, light were really falling. You can see I shot it at 1.8 at ISO 400 at 500 of a second. So you can imagine how dark it was. If I'd have half my ISO, it would have been 250th of a second. If I'd have halved it again, it'd have been 125th. Which 125th of a second at ISO 100 at f1.8, it's quite low. It was quite low light. But I decided not to use the histogram for this shot. I used my LCD. I used the histogram as well as a quick guide. But I used the LCD and I liked the darker shot better. So this is what I came up with. But I could have easily looked at my histogram and gone over. Let's say there, I could have easily overexposed it stuff and still had this shot. And then I could have come over in post and turned it down a bit. Now, you can still work that way if you like. But I've started to figure out that sometimes if I can and the situation's right, I'll... I'll use the histogram as a guide and then I'll manually think, well, no, I don't need it to be that much exposed. I don't like it like that. It looks it just, I mean, I never use my LCD really for contrast and, and clarity. But what I do use it for is I might use it as a bit of a gauge for the brightness between the histogram and that. And then I'll use the blinkies as well. So out of the camera, I decided to choose this. And if we look at my histogram, in all fairness, we could hide that image and turn it off and or take, put a mask over it and say to somebody, is that a good exposure? And they'd probably say, well, no, because look at the histogram, but that's that's bollocks. At the end of the day, the exposure is what you want it to be and what you deem to be great for yourself. Now, that exposure there is fine for me. I think it's great. Um, I like that, that these aren't grey. Uh, I know a lot of people, some, especially wedding photographers, they'll pull back the highlights and they'll end up with a dress that looks like that. And it looks like a mucky grey um, and like it could do with a bit of purcell on it just to bring back the white. Um, so remember, your histogram is there. I'm not saying don't use histogram by any shape or form. But what I am saying is it's just a guideline. Don't, you, you know, you, you use it. I mean, I'm going to show you an example where, another example where, let me just actually reset the exposure on this and reset the things. Flowers. Flowers are a prime example. If you listen to your meter. I mean, I did. Ah, in fact, no, I exposed that one hotter. Oh, yeah, look, look, look at my shutter speed. 1 100. 
and one 200. Now, I like the darker one better, but let's look at the histogram. In all fair, in fact, it was actually darker. That's the default. Let me just pull back these controls. That's the default. Um, and now, in all fairness, I could have... Let's just look at the histogram and forget the image. Let's say we've got a great exposure. Now, this is the sort of exposure that I would be getting on a bride. Because I know if I get... If I don't worry about the skin tones as well as the dress i'll end up with a really dark skin tone or something like where the skin won't be that dark but the skin tone might be something like that whereas i, I might actually what i'm trying to say is i might actually push it over even further sometimes i'll even clip a little bit on the dress to get some light into the face knowing damn well that i've only clipping a right little bit and i can just recover it back in two seconds but there's what looking at your Instagram would do. What I'm trying to say is, if somebody taped your screen up so you could only see an Instagram, you could take shots by using the philosophy, and this is what you get, but you don't have to. I like that exposure in this instance a lot better. And then I'd still pull back the highlights a little bit and pull back the whites and put some vibrance on. Then maybe pull back the blacks, put a bit of contrast on it. And I like that. That to me is a lovely, nice image. I don't want it any brighter. If I were going to print it, if I know I were going to print that, I'd probably knock it up to something like that. Or maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit. Oops. Maybe a little bit less. But in all fairness, I like that. Just for print, I'd just knock it up a couple, like 20% on exposure, and it'd just come back slightly darker. Um, so, again, your histogram's just a guide. Um, I'm going to show you an instance where, where I always tend to um, use my histogram. Now, here's a prime example if you look at the histogram, it's pushed right over to the right. And I deliberately did that on this shot. Because of the dynamic range, I really did use the histogram on this shot. I wasn't going to say, well, well, I like my exposure. It looks a bit more punchy there. Well, maybe it does. But I know that I'm going to end up with a load of underexposed shadows. So I push it as far as I can to the right. In fact, if I remember correctly, on the camera, there was a bit of blinking on this water. But Lightroom 4 gives you another it, it gives you another couple of stops of latitude on highlights so i tend to find out now that i can blow things out a stop on camera so if i'm getting no blinking say this is my default exposure and i've focused on i don't know uh this tree for me for me meter then i've recomposed and i've and i've took it and i've come out with this i know that i could probably push that overexpose it like this and 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 I know damn well that I'm gonna be able to come into Lightroom and it's gonna rip and it to be honest it probably ain't even gonna be blown out in Lightroom. It's only gonna be blown out on the camera. Now if you're gonna use that method that I'm talking about to gain Lightrooms for new enhanced highlight recovery, um I would practice it in you need to practice I've practiced it a lot and and it and i know now that when i go to weddings i know that i can overexpose things that i've never overexposed before and come home and, and to be honest when i put the raw files into lightroom it just didn't blown out and if it is it's just a tweak on highlight or whites to bring it back so i hope this video helps on instagram and i'm not saying don't use instagram i use it as well but bearing in mind um i mean i used to always use the instagram more than anything and, and like I said to you, this flower shot, if I'd have took this flower shot a year ago or whatever, my Instagram would have been like that. Maybe not. It would have been something like that. And and it might, and then I'd have come home and I would have tweaked it at home. Now, there's nothing wrong with working like that, but I decided it's much less editing, if my ISO is not really high, to sort of help my camera, because I'm used to the screen as well, to help my camera get me the job done out of the camera. So instead to go, well, I'll expose it like this. Oops, sorry. Alex, oops. We'll get there, don't worry. And here we go. To, to, to go like this and look at my camera and think, well, my Instagram's not the perfect, but the flower, the flower is my concern there. And it looks gorgeous. It looks vibrant. It looks lovely. Um, and I haven't really had to do much editing apart from, whereas if I'd have gone like this, I would have had to then turn exposure down. Now, if it had been an IISO, this is something you need to keep in mind. If I did, this were a bride's face, 
And this one, ISO 1600 or 3200, there's no way I would take this exposure. I'd use that histogram and I'd go, go over there, mate. And I don't care if the face looked a bit bright. I'd sort that later. But as long as I aren't clipping it, anything really important, I'd definitely push the histogram over to the right. And then, I mean, obviously only highlights and everything are turned on here. So I probably won't go that far. But I might push it over to here, as far over as I dare. Then I know that, oh, my exposure's bloody up and out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. I might definitely push it over to something like this. Then I know when I come back, I can pull highlights back, I can pull whites back, um, pump exposure back a little bit, blacks down a bit. And you can see it's not quite as dark as that one. But in an IISO situation, I would definitely want to push the histogram over to the right so that I could let more light into the shadows, basically. And it shows less noise. But low ISOs like this your histogram's just a guide and I've got no else to say on the matter your histogram's a guide you do need to use it but just use it as a guide um, and use your, your screen as well they are nice screens on there and they do help out in certain situations some people will take a bracketed exposure but I don't know I mean if you can get it within a stop I suppose then you can darken it a stop, you can brighten it a stop. So if you can get it somewhere near, then you can always fix it if you've shot raw later anyway. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe.